Well, Professor Clements with you, uh, doing some example problems regarding hydrogen spectral lines, um, doing a calculation with the Balmer formula, with the Rydberg formula, and then using the uh, concepts of Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom in that a uh, certain change of energy of the electron creates a certain wavelength of light. So let's first uh, work with the Balmer formula. We're told that we want the second longest Balmer line using uh, the Balmer empirical formula. Um, uh, the Balmer formula tells us the wavelength of the line is 364.5 nanometers multiplied by an integer squared divided by that same integer squared minus 4 and the value of n has to be greater than 3 or equal to 3, should say, greater than or equal to 3. So 3, 4, 5, 6 on up the list. Um, and doing this uh, calculation, the uh, situation with the red line of hydrogen is that is produced when the electron makes a transition from n equals 3 down to n equals 2. And the next line, the second longest line, is going to be for n equals 4 down to n equals 2. So the, if you try this on your own, if you put in a 3 here, you get around 656, I think, for the wavelength. So we're going to use n equals 4, our second longest line. Use a 4 for the n. So we can go ahead and put that in, 364.5 nanometers. I'm going to use a 4 for the n. I'm going to get a 16 here. I'm going to get a 16 down here and minus the 4. You should pause and do this calculation. Welcome back. 486 nanometers is what uh, I came up with for this calculation. Again, Balmer's empirical formula. Balmer had knowledge of the wavelengths of the hydrogen lines, as many other scientists did as well. He looked at that data and, by trial and error, came up with this formula, this empirical formula. It's not based on a theory, so it's a starting point for calculating hydrogen wavelengths, but doesn't really inform physicists much about hydrogen other than uh, integers are involved. Um, the n here is an integer. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Another empirical formula, the Rydberg formula, can be used to calculate uh, the wavelengths of uh, light from hydrogen. So 1 over lambda, 1.097 times 10 to the 7th, and that has units of inverse meters. And then 1 over the final integer number squared, so this is an n squared, minus 1 over the initial integer that represents the location of the electron in the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, n initial squared. It's true that for the Balmer series of lines, n final is always equal to 2. n final is equal to 2 for the Balmer series. n final equals 1 for the Lyman series. n final equals 3 for the Poshin series. But here, n final equals 2. The red line in hydrogen, the longest wavelength, that would be an initial n of 3. And again, the second longest, our initial state would be 4 for the n number for the electron. So let's put in those values, 1.097, 10 to the 7th. We're landing at level 2. So I get a 2 squared here. I'm starting at level 4. So 1 over 16. And you should calculate first the 1 over the wavelength value. The 1 over the wavelength value is 2 point... And I have trouble reading my writing on another sheet of paper here. Perhaps a 5. Uh, 6, 9 times 10 to the 6, but use whatever number you came up with on your calculator. And again, that's inverse meters. To find the wavelength, we have to divide this into 1. And now I'm confident that I have uh, the correct 
final result at least, 486 nanometers, in agreement with Balmer's formula. But another empirical formula, this formula is, has more applications because it covers not just the Balmer series, it's in the visible wavelengths, but it also covers the Lyman series in the ultraviolet, use a 1 for N final, or the Poshin series in the infrared, use a 3 for N final. Okay, next uh, task, calculate the wavelength of the same line, the second longest Balmer line in the visible spectrum is where the Balmer series is. Use the values of the electron energy levels uh, that are given by Bohr, his model of the atom, um, when this light is uh, being emitted. So some steps here. The wavelength, we're going to need the frequency of the light to calculate the wavelength, divide that into the speed of light. The photon energy, Planck's constant times frequency, the same calculation we use for the photoelectric effect, is going to be equal to the change in energy of the electron. And for this situation, we're starting in level 4, and we're going down to level 2. That's in the Balmer series. Again, level 2, there are energies. And Bohr informs us how to calculate those energies. For a particular level, the energy is minus 13.6 electron volts divided by n squared. Minus 13.6 electron volts divided by n squared. The negative sign here informs us that the electron is bound to the nucleus. The total energy of the electron is a negative number. That's all right. Um, it's allowed. And now we have to put in some uh, n values here. So if we do this, we see we need 4 and 2. So if I put in, um, I'll do the 4 first, minus 13.6 electron volts. What do we divide by? We have to divide by 16, 4 squared, and we get uh, minus 0.85 electron volts. And then E2, a little easier, minus 13.6 electron volts divided by 2 squared, that's a 4, and we get minus 3.4 electron volts. So we have the two energy values in the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. Now it's time to subtract them and produce delta E. Then we'll divide by Planck's constant and get the frequency. Those are the steps that uh, we're involved with here. So first the delta E. The delta E is minus 0.85 electron volts minus a minus 3.4 electron volts. The minus sign here is because we're doing a delta type calculation. So we subtract those two numbers. And I want delta E to be a positive. This photon has positive energy leaving the, uh, uh, the hydrogen atom. So doing this calculation, again, you should double check this on your own calculator. 2.55 electron volts, that's going to be the energy of the photon. So 2.55 electron volts is going to be equal to Planck's constant. And we use the electron volt form of Planck's constant, 4.14, 10 minus 15, that's in electron volts times seconds, and that's multiplied by the frequency we're trying to calculate here. So dividing 2.55 by Planck's constant in the electron volt form, I find a frequency of 6.1594 times 10 to the 14th. I'll round off when we get the wavelength. The wavelength is found by speed of light, meters per second, divided by our frequency. Hertz is 1 over seconds, 6.1594 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Or I'll put 1 over seconds here. And do this uh, on your own, then rejoin us. And I got 487 nanometers with the rounding that um, I did here. And in agreement with 486 on the other two calculations. It's just uh, this, these formulas are not perfect, um, but they give us a pretty close uh, agreement in the results. The Bohr model is kind of our transition now between classical physics and quantum mechanics. It works for the hydrogen atom. It does not give good results for every feature of the light from the hydrogen atom, and it does not give good results for any other element in the periodic table. Uh, so practice on this on your own. Ask some questions of your instructor.